three of the best things in the whole world are sex, money, and drafting fantasy football teams. My name is Adam Levitan, and today I'm going to help you accomplish two of those things. Best ball is a draft only fantasy football game. There's no waivers. There's no trades. There's no setting lineups. There is no nonsense. We draft a team, we sit back, and whoever scores the most points at the end of the season wins all the money. In this video, I am going to share with you the three strategies that will make you a winning best ball player. Strategy number three, emphasize player ceiling rather than floor. A really important aspect of best ball is that we're going to draft 18 players, but only eight of them will enter our starting lineup each week. We get to use our eight best scores within the positional requirements. So we really want volatile players with a really wide range of outcomes. For example, we have Traylon Burks and Brandon Cooks right next to each other in our rankings, right next to each other in base projections. But let's say that the Titans turn out to be a really bad team. Their throw rate spikes. Traylon Burks turns out to be just as good, if not better than A.J. Brown was in the A.J. Brown role. Well, then Traylon Burks is going to be a much better best ball play than Brandon Cooks because he will have that really, really high ceiling that is an unknown. We know what Brandon Cooks' ceiling is. We have a ton of data on him. In best ball, we really need to embrace the volatility and uncertainty that comes along with a rookie like Traylon Burks. Because if he flames out, well, it's not great for us, but it's not a killer either. We never even have to use him in our lineup. Thanks to the best ball format, we benefit from the spike weeks and we don't have to worry about the bad weeks. Of course, player ceiling isn't the only factor to consider when you're on the clock in a best ball draft. Which brings me to strategy number two, prioritize correlation. It is incredibly important to understand the payout structure in your best ball league. In these huge best ball tournaments like the one on underdog, almost all the money is in the top 10 or so places. And that is out of 451,000 entries. If you get 400th out of 451,000 people, you win just $1,000. And believe me, $1,000 is great. But if you get first in this, you win $2 million. We should be optimizing our draft selections to get to the top of the player pool. And how do you do that? How do you get to the top of a 451,000 person field? You're going to need correlation. We're going to need to limit the number of things we need to get right. Think about this. If Devonta Smith has a massive year and wildly exceeds expectations, well, then we know that Jalen Hurts will have had a big year as well. And it works the other way too. If Aaron Rodgers is able to sustain his dominance, his efficiency, even without Devontae Adams, then we know that one or more of Al Lazard, Christian Watson, Robert Tunyon, they're going to have an outsized result as well. The other reason correlation is important is because, as I said, all the money is up top. That's even true when we get to week 17. If we are lucky enough to reach the week 17 final, it's still a 470 person field. Correlation is going to pull teams to the top. QB wide receiver is, of course, the most obvious stack and has the strongest correlation, but quarterback running back from the same team is correlated positively, and quarterback tight end has a very strong correlation as well. So for optimizing to get to the top of that week 17 final, one thing we can add in is game stacks. That will add even more correlation to our teams. We don't know exactly what defenses are going to be good come January. However, we do know good quarterback play, and we do know good weather creates really good fantasy environments. So let's say we start our draft with something like Austin Eckler and Justin Herbert. We know the Chargers play the Rams in week 17, aka championship week. Targeting players like Allen Robinson and Tyler Higby on the other side of that Eckler-Herbert stack makes a lot of sense. Ideally, these two offenses will push each other to be aggressive the entire game, giving us what we need to ship the $2 million. And we play, of course, to win the game. Which brings me to our final and most important best ball strategy, strategy number one, draft as if you are right. The biggest mistake best ball players make is playing scared. It's tempting. It's really tempting to think, well, if I take Lamar Jackson in round five and he gets hurt, I better have another quarterback on my team that's really good. This is the absolute stone cold worst way to think. We are optimizing to finish in the top 0.1% of all entries. If we take Lamar Jackson in round five and he goes down, our team is almost certainly dead anyways. We have to be okay with that. There are two more ways to think about drafting as if you're right 
as a strategy. The first one are teammates. Of course, if we take Lamar Jackson in round five, we are betting that he hits and hits in a big way, which means that Mark Andrews and Rashad Bateman are almost always also going to hit in a big way. We don't worry about the downside scenarios. And the other way that draft is if you're right works is in our positional allocation. Let's say we start our draft with two running backs, Dalvin Cook and Derrick Henry. We have to assume those guys stay healthy all year. We have to assume they have huge, huge years. How many more running backs do we want to draft after we take Derrick Henry and Dalvin Cook? I would say one, maybe two, any more than that. And we're wasting roster spots where we actually need help. Because when you start running back, running back, well, we know our wide receivers are immediately going to be weaker than our opponents. We pass on a lot of the top ones. We need to increase our chances on hitting ceiling outcomes through shots on goal, through volume. Maybe we end up with eight. Maybe we end up with even nine wide receivers on our team to make up for that lack of quality at top. And we only end up with three or four running backs on our team. So don't make the biggest mistake that our opponents are making. Don't draft with a condom on. Draft as if you're right. There you have it. You're on your way to shipping the biggest best ball tournament in the history of best ball tournaments for $2 million. If you like this video, be sure and subscribe and visit establishtherun.com.